All right, uh, we are here with Mr. Clarence right in. And he's given us opportunity to get to know him today on the No Offense podcast. Uh, we're gonna get to know all about his historical career. He's at, you know uh, in the NFL and uh, uh -huh. and the USFL as well. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're gonna try to make the most of your time today. Uh, and thank you again. Um, okay. I always try to start um, all great interviews, you know, from the beginning. You know, I want to get mm -hmm. if it's okay. Could you let us know about your your upbringing as far as like where were you raised and what schools that you go to? All right. Uh, well, I was partially raised in, uh, in Compton, California, my, back in, you know, the early 60s. You know, blacks from Mississippi and uh, Louisiana either migrated to Chicago or L.A. for better opportunity. So my dad, we had seven in the family, but the youngest three siblings, we, uh, we went to uh, L.A. Uh, I had to be about, I heard, I was like three months. I was just, an imp I was just born, man. And my grandmother supposed to told my mom, don't take me. I was, you know, just born. Let me at least be a year. So we went out there and uh, pretty much got my roots there, athletic-wise, uh, you know, living in Compton, man. I, on my, just on my block, we had probably about eight or nine guys that went into the NFL or either played professional baseball, like Freeman McNeil, I'm familiar with him, went to UCLA, uh, Darren and Kevin Nelson, Floyd Hodge, George Henshaw played with the Padres. But let's go on, you know, in Compton. And uh, so probably when I was about 13 or 14, I thought I was coming to Louisiana for the summertime because we used to always come down for the summer for at least a week or two before, you know, baseball season kickoff in the summertime. Sure. And uh happened to uh, go down to Dulac, man, and my, I'm thinking I'm going back home. And my mom like, nah, you staying with your grandpa. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, your granddad wants you to stay because my older brother, like I said, my grandparents are, I raised my older three siblings. And uh, so he was my older brother that went to college and you know they had all went out Nickel State Southern University. And uh, so I went, I'm like, man, it was like a culture shock, you know, coming from Compton to Dulac, Louisiana. And uh, probably was the best thing though too, you know, it, it taught me how to, you know, about family, you know, uh, how to get that grind on and sacrifice for things that you didn't have. But uh, so from there, man, I, you know, my grandparents raised me and, uh, uh, wind up, you know, going to South Turbone High School, Oakland Junior High School, South Turbone High School, and walked on at UL, USL at the time as a walk on. Uh, couldn't believe it, man. Um, I mean, you know, I was 100, like 125 pounds, but you know, I, ha I had some speed with me. Yes, and uh, uh, went there as a walk on. And uh, man, my, my first year, you know, it was, it was okay as a walk on. Then, then Coach Cook came. And uh, man, once he came, man, it just, man, my career just escalated, man. Cause the trust, man, he, he was just a guy, you know, you can trust, man. He was like, a, not even a, a father, cause he was young too. See, he looked at young, you know what I mean? He always looked at young. And uh, man, you just can trust the guy, man, you know? And, you know, he kind of kept me on the right track, you know, uh, kept me level-headed, man. And once I wound up getting drafted in the USFL, I was like, probably one, I don't think I was the Mr. Irrelevant. I was probably the last one drafted in the, NFL, in the USFL. I was serious. I was like 17th round, like, you know, and I uh, got there and, you know, and man was on a practice squad for four weeks and, and all of a sudden they activated me. Jim Kelly, like, look, man, this guy doing this at practice. We need to activate him. And they activated me, man, probably mid part of the season. And it was history then, you know, and uh, come to find out the reason why, uh, I wasn't drafted higher because uh, uh, coach, my head coach at USL, man, he, he didn't he didn't speak highly of me for whatever reason, you know. And uh, you know, we kind of squashed it now, but you know, it, it kind of hurt me. But then a few months later, I was drafted in the third round with the Washington Redskins. So when USFL fold, my uh, uh, NFL uh, Redskins had my rights, so I went there. And, uh, my first year there, you know, it was kind of trying to get activated, you know, from a different system from running in a, a spread offense, going into a, a power offense. You know, we had George Rogers, you know, I mean, you know, back then it was running first, then you pass. Yes, sir. And, uh, and wind up getting traded there from there to Indianapolis uh, with the Eric Dickinson trade. And man, it was history then, man. I mean, they utilized me, all my talent, uh, punt return, kick return, wide receiver. I 
burnt versus, you know, scat back. So uh, Coach Ryan Meyer, bless his soul, man. He he reminded me of Coach Cook, man. Whatever took the win, he was gonna put his players in the right position. You know, a lot of times, you know, coaches are you ain't six foot three or six foot two, you you go play this position. You know, this man, just if a guy can ball, man, let him ball, no matter where he at on the field. Don't 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 stereotype him because uh what the paper stats say, the paper say, you know. And that's that I had to fight with that until I got to Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I said, but I thank Coach Cook, man. You know, man, he, man, great guy, man. I mean, I, I, I mean, he just was somebody you can trust, man. That's the key thing in a coaching, man. As a player, can you trust your coach? Because you know, I don't know, you know, your background, you know, athletic wise, but a lot of times, coaches, man, they lie to you, man. You yes, know, sir. They, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they're stabbing you in the back, bro. And uh, I witnessed that, yeah, but he was one of the guys, man. You can trust him, bro. I mean, he. And that's where everybody migrate. That's why he wins now, you know? Yeah. Now, before, uh, if I can, I just want to backtrack a little bit. Um, when you were going uh, into high school, was football even on the was football even on the brain back then? Or oh was yeah, it oh yeah. I, I always, I always claimed it, man. I always spoke it in existing. You know, I, I knew my talent, you know, because of where I came from, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, you know, God, and, and the most embarrassed, the most thing that really put the put the log on the fire. You, you know, a lot of guys that I went to high school with, you know, that I was better than, but I wasn't bigger than. They went to LSU, Tommy Boudreau, you had Jerrell White went to Grambling. Man, guys went to Southern and Nickel State, you know. And the night of the banquet, the only thing I came out with was a trophy, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my mom, my mom, like, you know, and she was very character. She was very a character, man. She was, you know, she was a, a, my greatest person in the world. But she liked to crack jokes, but she told me going home, man. And then she saw me feeling bad. And she looked, she said, uh, my mom was like four foot two, weigh about 300. And she she made a comment like, if I got to go strip and swing down a pole for you to go to college, you going to go. And I looked at my mother like, well, I guess I ain't going, mom. You ain't going to make too much money. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but, but I, yeah, man, that's but she, the other thing. I loved it at death, man. But she was, she was that type of character man she'll say something like that i looked at my mother driving like oh, no, no. <laughs> you ain't going to college. if you got if i gotta go and you go and drink down the pole and we clowned about it man and uh she sacrificed man and uh I, I i paid her a lot of dividends bro because of that man i retired her that's the best thing i ever could have did when i got drafted you know retired my, my mom and my grandparents man like you know Man, y'all ain't got to work no more. Man, God, God's been good to me, bro. You know, and uh, uh, and you know, I, I've been in a position, football, to help a lot of my family members. You know, yeah. So, and giving my my daughters, you know, probably one of the best lives. I always say my best investment was the education of my kids. You know, I was able to invest them. You know, they medical school. You know, they doing they doing well, man. You know, and uh, so that 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 that's the big that biggest investment I could have made. You know. The best, retiring my parents and uh, educating my kids. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely, I'm definitely glad to hear that that that, that came to fruition for you, especially coming from the the underdog story, boss. Oh man. yeah, man. I, I've been the underdog. You know, I've been the, the one picked last on the park. I've been that kid. You know, being small. You know, so you know. But I always say, man, you got to judge a man by his heart. You know. Sure. And at the end of the day, you know, the cream comes to the top. And uh, you know, and I, I sit back and, and laugh. Now I, I wind up. Seeing my coach, Coach Robinson, in last year, a few years ago, man, it was so ironic, bro, because I had kind of distanced myself from that school because, you know, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't get a scholarship to my junior year. I was living in a, in, a, in a, I was balling, but I wasn't, I was living in a regular dormitory. I wasn't eating with the football team. I had to eat with the regular student because I was on scholarship. So, yes. you know, I, I, I felt the, the, the betrayal and the embarrassment, man. And, uh, but really, that, 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 that pushed me even more. You know, because my wife, my wife today was my girlfriend at the time. She's like, how can you be on a football team? You only live with the players. You know, and I kind of lie, like, well, you know, my, my parents don't want me to stay in the dormitory with them. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know what you mean. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, you, know, I, you know, I've been there, man, on that phone, you know, you know, had to wait with the regular student and my mom on the other phone, the line. I'm like, mom, my mom, like, just hold down, son. I can't write the check. I'm going to make sure the check clear. You know, we on the phone, man, in the hall. I'm in a union on the hall phone. You know, we got to wait hours before my mom can get my brother deposit money before I can do my tuition, man. So uh, I've been through that, man. And me and my roommate talked about that right now, bro. He, he was from Denver Spring. And uh, 
when I first met him, man, he'd been my roommate since I was in college. And I claimed that I was going to the NFL. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And now we talk, he said, bro, you didn't have a scholarship and you five foot seven, 120 pounds. You talking about NFL, you know, and we living in a, in a, in a, in a student dormitory. Yes, uh, I spoke in and it's distant, bro. And, and failure wasn't an option, bro, because I didn't want to go back to do that. You know, and that, and from there, man, I always been a guy. I always had to prove myself, but you know that that that, that made my game even better. That made my game better, man. So now, at 55 years old, man, I said I'd never work again in my life, and then God has blessed me to sit here and chill out and and reap my harvest now. You know what I'm saying? You yes, know. Sir. All the time. Hey man, God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. When you, when you, uh, when you were, in, when you were uh, drafted to the to the Colts, uh, the Indianapolis mm -hmm. Colts. Uh, at that point, did you? At that point, how did you feel? I was traded to the Colts. I was drafted to the, to the Redskins, and right. that was a trip, man. Because uh, if you go on YouTube, I got a story. If you see my, uh, there's a thing, man. They do a clip. Uh, uh, I was inducted into the Regional Hall of Fame, but I tell the story. I was a uh, when I when I when when I when I when I went to the USFL, mm -hmm. I uh I was on the practice squad. And on the practice squad, you only made three hundred dollars a week. Mm. And I had to get an apartment, man. I got an apartment and uh and the lady didn't understand. She she I told her I wanted to, I wanted to get my apartment. Did she have any apartments by the laundry room? You know, back in them days, apartment complex had a laundry room you could wash your clothes. Yes, sir. She's like, nah, why do you want to stay there? Cause there's a lot of traffic and people. But but back then they had a phone on the wall. Mm. She didn't understand. I didn't have enough Echo. money. I didn't have enough money to get a phone. So I would give people that number. I can hear it ring because my, my, my partner was next right to the laundry room. So I hear the phone all day ringing. So I give people that number. I open my door, grab the phone and talk, you know, because I couldn't afford a phone. You know, by the time, by time I got my check after $300, I could probably clear about $175. So, and then what's so good about this man, Jim Kelly, he used to let me come by his house because he understood what was going on, man, financially with me. And uh, I would go to his house in Sugarland and uh, man, I, I, I would eat, man. I would eat and play video games. They thought I was over there really to play video games, but I was over there because uh, I didn't have no food to eat, man. You know, and uh, couldn't afford it. I was embarrassed to call home. You know, because they, they didn't understand. You're a pro football player and you you came by, you know, fool, you know, but they didn't know I was on a developmental squad. Yeah. And uh, and when I got put on uh, on active, you know, I get my ready. I was making like $30,000, but they deferred to pay me because, you know, you know, because I didn't play the first few weeks. So I only probably made like 15000 right. And uh, then they came and they resigned me and they kind of kind of got me on that. They resigned me. And uh, he told me, man, they, they said, look, we're going to sign you for four years for $200,000 with a $5,000 signing bonus. And I was like, man, BM I, first thing I thought about a BMW. I can yeah. buy me a damn BMW <laughs> and go back <laughs> on campus. And look, I signed the contract not knowing. I told Jim Kelly, I said, man, man, I signed, you know, make $200,000, bro. I'm 19, 20 years old. And Jim said, well, how many years? I said, I don't know. And he, I got the contract for four years. So they judged and judged me. So by that time, Donald Trump bought our team. So we merged the New Jersey Generals. And that's when we folded. And uh, the Redskins called me Bobby Beth. And he was like, look, man, we need to get you up here. Uh, here go your signing bonus. We're going to give you 250, I think it was $250,000 to sign. And uh, no, $350,000 to sign and give me a uh, uh, 200000 250000 $300,000 uh, uh, salary. And I'm like, wait, hold on, man. Say that again. Wow. I wow. said, so I get this all at one. How many years? I said, how many years is that going to be? He said, it's three years. I said, so you going to give me a check? I'm on the phone. My mother, she, she done passed out. Oh, God, it's good. Oh, that, that. <laughs> I said, man, I get up there. I ain't never had that much money in my life, man. You know, and, but it was, it, was, it was great, bro. I had to laugh because, you know, I got screwed in the USFL. You know, Donald yeah. Trump still owed me 20 grand. He ain't paid, you know, he only paid Jim Kelly. Hershey Walker and Flutie. The rest of the guys on the team, yeah, he, he hey, bro, he, he still ain't paid us, bro. And uh, so I always said, you owe me 20000 Now I want my money. <laughs> oh, man. See, he, he passed that stimulus, man. He still got a check for you. I'm trying to tell you, I, I was about to go up the wire. Look, hey, bro, but you, you know, you still got <laughs> your books, y'all. <laughs> like you say, man, 
it's a funny story, but you know, but that it molded me, man. And, and when I first signed my multi-million dollar contract, that was like, nah, man. I I actually cried and sit in the bathroom and you know, I on my wife, I'm on the phone with my wife. And I'm crying like, man, you know, we're a millionaire. And she's like, well, well, come home. You know, back then they didn't have direct deposit. Yeah. I was so scared to get on the plane because I figured if I get on the plane, the plane crashed, my family will get the money. No. I'm, dude, I'm, I'm tripping. I right. got a million dollar signing bonus in my hand. And I'm like, I'm on the phone in the bathroom. My wife like, look, I got this check. And uh, she said, well, come on, get on the plane. I said, no. I said, I'm, I'm at the rental car. We was up in, uh, I just come from the Pro Bowl and went to Indianapolis to get my stuff. And Jimmy Earth said, like, come on, I need to talk to you. And, uh, so he, you know, he took care of me and, I, and, and so when I got, a, I got the car and I said, if I drive, then I might get mugged when I, you know, get to the gas station or something, the hell angels might jump on me or something, kill me or something, I don't know. So man, I wind up getting on the plane and uh, and I prayed so much, bro, I could have been a bishop when I landed, bro. <laughs> I said, man, I prayed so much. Look, I, I was praying so much on that plane when we landed. I was like, oh, I'm good now. And uh but it, it was all history then, bro. You know, it was history then, you know. So, uh, you know, it, it was, and I, I'm glad I went that route, you know, because it made me appreciative of what I did, deserve. I wasn't given anything, you know. Sure. I mean, nobody gave me anything. And that's why I tell my wife now, I say, you know, we still living like we living because we earned it. You sure. know, I got friends of mine, man, they call me all the time, man. They in shelters and, you know, and you see, you read the papers, man. You know, guys, they, don't, they ain't got nothing no more. And just, you know, and just whatever reason, you know, bad investments and just bad decisions. Yes, and, uh, and you know, uh, she, I said, I'm still living the same way, still doing the same thing. And she, I said, because we earned it. It wasn't given to me. I, I had to earn this, man. I said, ain't nothing. I wasn't no first round pick. I never experienced a college coach coming in my house, asking my parents they want me at their they, they, they university. I never experienced that. I never experienced to put the head on my head. I never experienced none of that. I said, but at the end of the day, I went to the Pro Bowl, Super Bowl, and I made millions. I said, so it ain't about how you start the race, how you finish it. You know, I always tell my kids that, you know. I said, the last laugh is the best laugh, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I told Coach Roberts when I saw him, I was telling the story about him. I wound up meeting him one day, going to UL game. And uh, man, he coming, some way we, we met and we haven't talked in years, man. And so we had to say something because, you know, we face to face. And I'm like, man, we talking. He's like, you know, I'm proud of you and all this bullshit, man. I'm, yeah, all right, coach. And I told her, I said, look, man, I said, bro, if you'd have played me right, I said, you probably have a statue in front of this stadium, man. I said, but hey, you know, so let be, you know, I'm good. And uh, so now, you know, we we talk and, you know, we, we you know, he calls and I call him sometimes, you know, just let bygones be bygones. But, but Coach Cook, man, he was like, yeah, he, 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 he was he solid, bro. Yeah, solid. He, hey, bro, solid man, bro. Solid man, bro. I mean, anytime I had a problem, when in his office, man, he didn't judge me, man. He always tried to figure the situation out, you know. I mean, just a, a great man, bro. You know, and you don't find him like that. I, 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 on a pro level, like I say, a lot of them backstabbing. I, I done seen coaches tell you one thing, and they decision already made, but they're bull crap you, you know, uh, you know, just not right, you know. But him, psh, he said something, bro. You can put that in stone, cause yeah, you know. So he, he, correct, yeah, he, he fought for me. I mean, a lot of things happened. You know, I, I, you know, I don't you really share this situation, but I was, when I was in college, man, they had, they had took me in for a murder charge, man. And uh, and I'm like, huh, I'm in class and all of a sudden these detectives come in class and I'm cheating on the test. And all of a sudden, man, I'm telling my partner, like, bro, it's NFL scouts. And uh, man, the teacher, I seen an expression on her face and she like, back for me. So I'm like, oh shit, I got a cheat slip in my hands. So I just swallowed that joke, man. I just, <laughs> 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 and she, she like this detective so and so so and so and I'm like huh and like yeah man we need to talk to you go to your dorm I'm like for what and she just just don't talk just go to the dorm and uh went to the dorm and they looked all in my room bro and ramshack my room then we go to the president Odimar go to his office man when I get there you had coach Santa Robinson uh coach um, uh, I call him coach Blanco you know uh Dean Dean Blanco was in there yeah. and and president Odimar and uh and, and man it had another one of my other players he was in dude named george hamilton he was in there too so we're in there we they telling us about a piece of hut guy got killed and the only thing saved us was we was in study hall at the time but mm -hmm. they said they saw a guy five eight running towards the dormitory where i stayed I'm like dude got a million guys on this campus five eight yeah and, uh, so so this is the coach head coach this is what he said 
the dude, George Hamilton, he was an engineer, made very smart brother from Florida. And coach said, George, nah, I can't see that. I can't see him doing it. He's an engineer, great student, you know, Griff's a great kid. He called me Skeeter. He said, Skeeter? I don't know. Now this, 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 my, this, I'm looking at him like, what the fuck you just said, bro? Right, he he gonna put me in. Hold on, Dean Blanco. Dean Blanco, Governor Blanco husband said, that kid right there, no, nah, ain't no way. Good kid. Mm -hmm. Good man of a kid. He just it, 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 Odie, uh, Dean, uh, President Odimar knew me real well too. So like, nah, 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 uh, 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 nah. They wind up putting George in jail for six months. The smart one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. Yeah, he went to jail for six months, man. Sam Robinson had to mark his house. Yeah, it was it was deep, bro. And uh, and uh, but so anyway, I got in the league, bro. And I get a call one day, and uh, like this is uh, Lafayette Police Department. We open up a case. I'm like, bro, man, I'm not involved in this shit, man. I told y'all, they yeah. were to my partners. They playing a prank on me, man. They're like, oh, it's a prank. I do, don't ever do that shit, man. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but, Co but Coach Cook, Coach Cook, man, Louis Cook, man, I went in his office, man. I cried, man. He said, man, Skeeter, he said, you gonna be okay. And I think they talked to him, man. They, they had to talk to him as a character witness. And uh, he said, look, bro, you gonna be okay. Just, just keep doing what you're doing. He said, just you know, we know it wasn't you, man. And, uh, and I'm like, bro, how the hell I get caught up in this shit? Right. You know, I'm, I'm thinking, man, and I'm calling my mom, crying, and you know they crying, like, man. But the dude who Joe Robinson said he couldn't see him doing it, and he didn't do it, but he got held in, in jail for like six months, man. Yeah, yeah, bro. I never, never talked to the guy. I heard he works in Florida. He's an engineer for NASA. Uh, good dude, man. But he left school and never came back. Yeah, That's never came back, bro. I imagine that would tarnish their reputation, especially something. But you, what you already trying to be there, you know, on uh, football and and walking yeah. out. That was the last, that was the last thing. Yeah, there, yeah. Know? Come to find out, with some guys from New Orleans, what they would do, they would call and order pizza, mm -hmm. and then they arrived the pizza. So one, and and we happened that night, man. When that happened, I'll never forget. I was talking to my girlfriend on the phone, looking down, looking down, down from the window at the other dormitory. I don't know if me, USL had Boris and uh, Stokes. And you've seen all the police cars and stuff like, man, you know, you just figure a fight or something. There's always something going on, not knowing that. And uh, man, that, 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 yeah, that, that. I was like, bro, out of all these jokes on campus, my height, how the hell y'all put me? <laughs> like, and, uh, but yeah, the coach Cook, man, again, bro, he was, he was that, that, that counsel, he was that ear, man, that, you know, and he, he understood what I, what I was mentioning, what I was going through. And uh, like I said, he told me, once he told me everything gonna be okay, that was good, you know. That was so said, good. Yeah, but that head coach, that's dirty. Like, yeah, I, if man, you're not gonna right. say anything helpful, then yeah, why yeah, say anything at all? Throw me under the bus like that, you know. I I may not be an engineer, maybe, but shit, I'm in general studies, dude. <laughs> right, right. You on campus, man. Everybody yeah, can't even make it there, so it's I'm like man. To the university, dog. I'm doing better. This dude wouldn't even play. Yeah. He, he, he if he played one game, all he did was practice and go to go to go to lab for engineer. You know, I'm like, wow, really? <laughs> you, know? you think he, you think he saw the greatness that was threatened, or he just you know, saw the opportunity? I don't, I don't know what the motive was. Man, he still, you know, that, we man. never really talked about it, bro. You know, and Cook, 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 like, man, you know, and so many words, let it go, Ski. You know, because I wanted to confront him, like, bro, really, you know, you could have messed up my, my, not even my career, just my, you, me as a person, bro. I mean, I could have been falsely accused of some shit for what you said in that room. You know, and, and you never said you were sorry or never today, you know, but I don't, I don't mention it to him, you know. I, I, it didn't you know, stop nothing. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't stop nothing, you know, you just made me greater, man. You know, but they did scare me when they called me that time play a prank on me. <laughs> I bet, I bet. Um, let's, uh, I got a couple more questions, and I appreciate your time, definitely, brother. Um, so, um, you get that signing bonus, you know, they give you the check, you got it. You can't believe, I know it's, it's a shocking awe. Uh, situation anyway because it's the first time something like this has happened to you yeah. so uh how does that change your playing when you hit the field like, oh, you, bro, I, I was balling i was balling out man i was i was you know and, and the thing was i represented myself mm -hmm. i had just come from the pro bowl man and i was kind of upset because i kept telling jim ursay you know you had eric dickerson and andre rising jeff joy and i went in and told him man like bro one of somebody got to go Cause man, you know, a lot of times people don't realize when you see all these superstars on the same team, they get on TV, all we best of friends, man, look at hogwash, bro. Hey, I'm telling you, dude. And uh, I went in, 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 in to earth. me and Jimmy was tight. Me and him was tight, man. And I went into his office at Jimmy, man. 
man, something got to go, bro. I mean, you know, I said, I'm cutting this game. I'm cutting this field in half. Mm -hmm. I'm cutting this field in half. 50 yard, I'm constantly getting the kickoff there, a punt return. I'm, I'm, I'm changing the field position, but I'm not getting paid like Eric Dickinson, Andre Rising, and Jeff George, man. They only got to go 50 yards. And they making five, six million dollars a piece. I right. said, nah, Jimmy. So he's like, man, you know, let me talk to my dad. And uh, da, da, da. And I'm like, go talk to him. So he <laughs> come back in the room and uh and uh he said, uh, look, he said, man, my dad, you know, we're gonna give you. I said, look, let me tell you something. I said, bro, when I look in the stands, I see a lot of Clans Verde and jerseys in that stand. I don't see your name on nobody's jersey. That's how me, that's how close he, me and him, he and I was, bro. We could talk like that. I said, Jimmy, I don't see nobody on your name on nobody's jersey. So they come to see me, not you. I said, so man, you need to pay me like they coming to see me. And uh, so he said, well, tell you what I'm gonna do. He said, uh, I said, look, whatever you do, I won't be the, I won't be a millionaire and I won't be a top two player, high paid player on this team. Thanks. Uh, and he he did that. I mean, we just talking like me and you talking, bro. And uh, he called me, I, I got to check in on him. He called me back and said, look, he said, I got some more good news for you. I said, what? He said, uh, uh, I got rid of, I traded Andre Rising to Atlanta and we uh, got rid of Eric. He said, now this is your team. Yeah. All right, now. Yeah, so look, check this out, bro. This happened about three years ago. My wife saw Andre Rising on Facebook. I don't do social media, but she, some way found him on Facebook. So we round up contact each other. So we talking, man, you know, just chopping up from the past. And he said, man, that's something I always wanted to tell you, bro. I'm like, what? He said, bro, you know why they drafted me to the coach? I said, I don't know why they drafted me, but I was pissed off when they did draft because we didn't need a wide receiver. We need some defensive backs because Jim Kelly and Marino, we was in that division, and they was killing us. I said, we need, to, we need to stop Duper and Clayton and Andre Reed, shit. And uh, he said, well, they told me they drafted me because they bought me to replace you, bro. I man, no, no, check this out. He said, You never knew that, huh? I said, No, bro. I said, But well, something I'm gonna tell you that you probably never knew. I said, You know why they got rid of you? He said, No, nah. I said, Because I went and told Jimmy there wasn't enough room for me and you. I said, Now you put that in your pipe, you smoked that. I said, Now you right. didn't know that either, huh? <laughs> right, wow, I was I said, looking up for it back then, yes, yeah, sir. So, so, so there's a lot of cutthroat be going on, you know. But when we got on TV, we was like, We were best of free, even me and Eric. Me and Eric, he gets on, he trips one time. He gets mad like I'm not. We was running reverse. He's like, bro, I'm not here. I'm a hall. I'm a future Hall of Fame. I'm not here to hand no ball off to nobody. I'm not no damn quarterback. I'm a Hall of Famer. So I said, well, evidently, then I, you know, he was talking about me. So I got in the pair. I said, well, evidently, you ain't that good because you, you got to get a ball to me. You got to get a ball to me on third and fourth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, he was that. He was that arrogant type of dude. But we, but we was tight. But. You, you know, but he wanted that be that that diva, bro. You know, so when you get on the team like that, man, man, I'm telling you, bro, it's problems, bro. When you see everybody, oh, this is my dog. Nah, nah. It's nah. not really like that. Nah, you yeah. go home. Joke go home, be dogging each other. When you see each other, what's up, dog? It's my man. You know, I'm like, you know that joke ain't worth the shit, you know? Why he getting paid all that money? Yeah, but uh, it was good, though, man, you know? And then when I did get paid, I had some flack because a lot of, you know, they, once they did post it one time, they, you know, back then they post your salary in the paper. Mm -hmm. They post it, man. And I had got like Ray Donaldson, guys who've been in the league for 15, 16 years. Like, uh-uh, this motherfucker getting what? Just catching punts? Hell no. <laughs> man, what was, but, hey, what it is, what it is. Yeah. What, was, what was on your mind, boss, man, when you running, you know, back toward the opposition you got that ball man and you know that oh, i knew you i know knew, free safety I, trying to light you up what you what you yeah, i knew i knew they couldn't catch me you know i i i, I changed the narrative on who had the power i always tell him bro i always tell him man look if you miss me you got to be in somebody video highlight <laughs> so you better try to you better try to contain me instead of trying to hit me you right. know because if you contain me you better have some you know and wait for some other piece to come but if you guys tell that to Ronnie Lott, all them guys, bro, if you, if you try to hit me and take me out because I'm small, if you don't get good lick on me, you know, yeah, you know, you dance in the end zone. So I put that on their mind first, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I used to come out before the game with track shoes on. This is mess, <laughs> this dude, this dude, mental stuff to jokers, man. But uh, it was, it was fun, man. I like to say, bro, I, 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 me and Mel Gray after, after uh, Billy White from Johnson, he kind of put kick return on the map. Then it kind of fell down for some years. Then myself and Mel Gray came and we kind of changed the game, man, and showed how important special team was on, 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 in the game, you know, field position. 
you know. So and that was my thing to get paid, and I used that, you know. Uh, hey man, you know, pay me for what I do. You know, don't just pay me because of position. Pay me because I change. I change the game, and I can change the game at any time. I'm a game changer. You know, just like Steph Curry. You know, I mean, dude. You, I mean, he's he a game changer. Anytime he can hit a three on you. You know, yeah, he ain't got. Right. If he's not six foot, he's not seven foot. You know, he don't look like Shaq. You know, but I tell you what, I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, even though some people you know, would, would take it as a disadvantage. It actually seems like it, it. Would you think that? Would you think it offers an advantage that they automatically count you out, or that they automatically assume that because of your stature? Well, it, it changed I have... once I started balling. Yeah, you know? now I mean, they know. It, it was in the paper. It'd be Clarence Verdan in the coats. Mm-hmm. You know, at first, with Eric Dickerson in the coats, and you know it, it changed. You know, so he's like, you know, I was the leader. I was the captain, man. I was, you know, not, and I, and I felt that responsibility, and. uh you know, it, 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 but, I, but I balled, bro. But then at the end, I did get kind of complacent, you know, didn't have that, you know, it was about that dollar, you know, getting old in my career, you know, it started, you know, wearing on you, you know, and uh, and uh, so, it, it, you know, and when, when he released me, when they traded me, then I took a pay cut. It was like, man, you know, we paying you all this money and we're not getting pro- productivity. So that's the only thing about the NFL, man. You know, your, your contracts are not, even though they say they're guaranteed, they're not guaranteed. You know, I mean, guaranteed. You know, if you can't walk out on the contract, but they can release you on the contract. I mm. never understood that. You know, they can so, they can terminate the contract agreement, but you can't, or you'll get fined. I can't say, well, I, I'm a mispractice because I don't like. I need more money. But they can say, look, man, we doing we going another direction with the team, and uh, so. And when they told me that, man, they told me. I, I know I talk a lot, bro. But they when I got yeah. told I was going to a funeral, man. And uh, and Homer, I was going to a funeral, phone ringing. I'm in New Orleans, got to go to home when my first cousin had died. And uh, the phone kept ringing because my brother's calling me because I was on the program to sing, you know. And uh, so I, I was like, man, if I answer this phone, they're going to know I haven't left New Orleans. Then I'm like, you know what? I got kids. My wife trying to get the kids together, man. You know, it take time. So I'm saying, I'm going to pick up the phone and tell them, look, I'm going to get there, but just put me at the end of the program. And when I get there, I'll do what I do. So I, 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 uh, Grab the phone and it's Jimmy Ursay. I'm like, he said, uh, how you doing? I said, man, doing all right, not too well. But you know, I said, what's that? He said, well, I'm not gonna hold you, Clarence. I got some good news and bad news. I said, well, coach, I, I already got bad news. I'm going to a funeral. My cousin just died. I said, uh, he said, well, all right. He said, the good news is you're a free agent. Good luck. Hung up the phone. So check this out, man. So it, it didn't hit me. So I'm sitting in the funeral. And I'm, I'm sitting there, my, you know, on the front row, my cousin, he in the cast, he dead. And I'm looking at everybody. And all of a sudden, I just started crying, bro. I'm like, bro, I done left three million on the table. Yeah. So they thinking I'm crying because of my cousin in the casting. I'm you... crying because... <laughs> he got a different kind of problems. Dude, I lost $3 million. So my wife, you know, she, she kind of grabbed me like, oh, it's going to be good. Everybody's going to be good. And I'm saying to myself, to myself, I said, you just don't. When we get in that car and I tell you what's really what I'm really crying about, you're gonna be crying too. Oh, like me. <laughs> I said, man, he dead. He ain't here no more. He can't do nothing for me. I said, man. So I, I had to kind of make a joke. I said, this is joke cut me or uh, traded me. You know, so when I get home, when I get home, I called him like, you know, when he hit reality hit me. I'm like, Jim, man, what's happening, bro? What's happening? He said, man, we're trying to trade you. And uh, you know, he said, but you know. Dad, his dad, you know, he really, Jimmy ran the team, but the dad was still the owner. Mm-hmm. So he said, uh, you know, dad, you know, we just want to go another direction with the team. Yeah. I said, bro, I can go whatever direction y'all want to go. Let's, let's do that. He said, no, no, no. You going your way and we going no, our way. <laughs> Dang, man. He said, so, you know, it, it, but it was all good, man. But, you know, it, it, but like I say, bro, I enjoyed it, man. And, you know, sports been good to me. It, it, it led me to go around the world, meet, you know, beautiful people, man, good people. Uh, you know, like you say, man, do things for my family, my kids, man. And, you know, just just, just a life, you know. I mean, I got such problems like anybody else, you know, go through, you know, emotionals and, you know, and, and, and physical problems. And, you know, I mean, my wife, she beat cancer, man. And uh, so, you know, it, it don't discriminate, you know, yes. what what you have and nothing, you're going to go through some things in life, you know, but so far as that, if I wasn't financially or in a position 
to get her resources, man. I don't think she had been here today. So, you know, playing football gave me opportunity to get connections in the medical field. And, you know, just, man, just, it went, I never forget with the Redskins, my wife, when she first got diagnosed, man, they, uh, the Redskins sent me home. Joe Gibbs, like, look, man, go home, be with your wife, and don't worry about it. So I'm thinking about my position, man. I just got married. I'm like, he said, no, look, handle your wife. Your wife and God is more important than anything. He said, you be with your wife as long as possible. And I came back about three weeks later, man, you know, you know, it, it was good. And, and, and Ursay, man, you know, she had went through a surgery and they had found out about it, man. It was like, you know, dude, even I'm getting up when Hurricane Katrina hit, man, Jimmy Ursay called my wife. I was in home. Take a long story short. He said, look, he told my wife, tell him to go, go anywhere y'all at and, and get a house and tell a realtor to call me, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That was real talk. So I'm, I'm like, bro, I'm all right. No, no, no. You, I'm in home. I'm in New Orleans. And my family was in Opelousas. And my wife, he must have called to my wife because one of the players' wives, you know, got contact my wife. So, you know, everybody, so I was still out here trying to hustle, make some money, trying to figure out, you know, what, what's next. Yes, and, sir. Uh, yeah, and then when I called him, like, man, what's happening, man? You know, I was already mad because I left, you got $3 million of my money that you didn't yeah. ever pay me. So you still owe me, bro. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so he's like, look, man, that was business. That was back then. Whatever happened, man, he said, let bygones be bygones. He said, look, man, I'm just worried about your family right now. And I just want you to go get a house. Whatever you get, tell a realtor to call us, call me, and that's done. And that mother bought that house, man. Wow, dude. man. That, that, dude. Dude. That's, man. That's, that's real talk, cuz. So everybody in Indianapolis, then when I go back, I always go back. Like, man, you know, Jimmy, da, da, da. I said, bro, y'all don't know the story, bro. Yeah, it, it's not even about football. Man, yeah. it's about this man concerned about my family, bro. And I told him, I said, man, I'm going to pay you back. And uh, uh, then, then, then after that, when the Super Bowl hit, they went to the Super Bowl against Chicago, man. He called me like, look, man, I know you've been going through a lot. He said, look, I got 20 tickets. Fly you and your family up here, man. Y'all need to get away from New Orleans. Come up here and have a good time. Dude, 20 tickets. Wow, really? That's that's amazing, man. That's love. That's so, love. So, so what I did, I sold the tickets. I sold the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I sold the tickets. I sold the tickets. And my wife got mad. She got mad in hell, bro. Why the hell you did it? God ain't gonna bless. Man, you, you told the ticket, man. And so my daughter, so I told my daughter, I said, look, my, I had to, oh, my youngest one, she was real young. And my mm. oldest one, bro, I said, I know how to get them. I said, look, I said, tell you what, I can get three, four thousand dollars for each ticket. That's a lick, man. 20 tickets? Yes, I said, that's a lick. So I said, look, I say, and I met some people from New Orleans because New Orleans thought they was going to the Super Bowl and they lost against the Chicago. So a lot right. of people in New Orleans already got reservation in, in Miami because they thought the Saints were going to be there. So right. the dude like, man, I, I'll give you whatever you want. So I went to my wife and she said, no. She said, look, you, you, at least our kids got to go. So I went to my older daughter. I said, look, y'all. I said, y'all want to go to the game? Yeah, daddy. I said, tell you what I do. I give y'all $1,000 and y'all go to the mall and go shopping. Oh, daddy. They're the older one. They're in high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we ain't went with no game, daddy. All right, I know I got them. So the youngest one, I said, hey, you really want to go to the game? She said, yeah, daddy. I told my teacher, my friend, that I was going to go to the game. I said, look, she like she, she wanted these skates. I said, look, me and, I said, you and daddy, we're gonna tell you, I said, tell you what I'm going to do. You. I said, we're going to go to the store and you know them skates that you want with the lights on it? I said, I'm going to go buy you those skates. I said, then we're going to go to Disney World. We're going to go to Orlando and we're going to ride and have a good time. I said, you don't need a single game. I said, which which you ready to go to Disney World and get some skates or you want to go to the game? I was packing up to see Mickey Mouse, huh? Disney World? <laughs> <laughs> so I got her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So man, man I told so look, check it out. So Jimmy calls me like that Wednesday, man, uh, for the parade. Like, hey, dude, I'm calling, man. Y'all wanna come up to the parade? I'm like, Jimmy, I appreciate it, man. I said, nah, you know, I'm trying to get my house together. I said, you know, man, y'all gonna enjoy the moment. He said, look, dude, he said, matter of fact, he said, I didn't see you. I said, bro, I said, I saw, uh, I think I said Anthony Carter. I said, I said, man, I saw Anthony Carter, and I ain't seen him at all. And then they started talking. He said, yeah, he said, but anyway, he said, man, I was shit fake. I was so damn drunk. I said, I saw you, dog. I said, yeah, you know, I see you. Oh, man. Why pass you? Shook your head and everything. Yeah, you was drunk, dog. You, I mean, you won the Super Bowl, man. You was shit faced, man. You, I, said, bro, I, I, said, I didn't want to bother you too much, man. Said, man, man. But uh, yeah, but my wife, she always said, she that ain't right, you know. But every time he come down, you know, when they play the Saints, bro, 
man. He called, I go pick him up downtown. We go ride around. Just, just love, man. Yeah, good dude, bro. Good dude, bro. It's so yeah. awesome that you guys have that camaraderie, man, and that, and that yeah. it, it followed, you know, even off the field. Well, the, the key thing about professional sports, man, and Dave Winfield told me this, man, he said, always keep your relationships. He said, that's the key thing, man. He said, you're going to meet people, bro, that are going to be more beneficial to you after football. Dave Winfield, the baseball player, it's mother to me in my neighborhood. And what me and him was real tight, man. He just used to always kind of school me like, bro, you know, and I, and I, you know, looked up to him as a mentor. And I'm like, to come from Dave Winfield, man, I, 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 he said, man, look, get much as you can get, but keep those connect. Don't burn no bridges. Keep those connections, man. And Katrina, that showed it, bro. That showed it, man. Katrina, man, I mean, it was like, bro, it was, dude, it was like, I was making more money as Katrina, man. It was coming in from all over the place, bro. You know, and I told her, I said, man, I'm, I'm good. He said, no, you're not good. He said, man, what I just seen on TV, you're not good. You know, and my, my family life went, 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 kept, kept going, bro. You know, no, no. No hiccups at all, you know? So like other people I know, you know, had problems financially, just, you know, it was devastating, man. And, uh, man, it, you know, it's, I just got to pinch myself some time, like, bro, is this real? You know, but like you say, man, I earned it, you know? Yeah. Hey man, they, that's, I'm definitely glad to hear that you guys were able to recover, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, man. It's one of the oh, most devastating yeah, things. I, I had 15 foot of water in my house and, Redid it better than what it, what it was. Sometimes bad turned good. That's what I was telling my sister in Hurricane Ida and my daughter. I said, you know, sometimes bad turned good. You know, God will wash away all that and bless you with something new. And my older daughter seeing that now. I said, what daddy told you? Dad, you're right. Now you're able to fix your house better than what it was. You already was complaining about it. And the hurricane came and just put the dent to it. So you got insurance money to get it better updated like you wanted. You know, I, said, I went through that. Yeah, I said, what's bad can turn out good if you, if you handle it right. If you handle it right. It can be a blessing, you know? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it's a, all with the old and with the new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that actually speaks to me in volumes right now, boss man, more than you can understand. Uh, the, uh, so, so uh, I got one last question, my man, and, and, and then if it's okay, I'm, I'm gonna let you go. I just, I appreciate your time. The, the, um, as far as people that are just now entering, um, cause somewhere, you know, there's a, a little kid who's thinking about football, um, right. and not knowing the heights um, and, and, and maybe he wants to you know take him as far as he can what are some jewels that you might be able to drop him as far as you know navigating his career and um, well, uh, just being on your side of it you know some things that you should watch out for on the way well, well the key thing is being real to yourself and be and have that grind man you know and and, and, and it works in all faith not just grind on the field in school I mean you know you, you just you have to have that grind bro because don't think that, you know, and I see a lot of kids, man, parents, I had one kid, man, this has been a few years ago, he went to St. Augustine, and I was, went to the game, his dad, my frat brother, to see his son, hell of a player, I think he played around Leonard Fournette time, good player, bro, wide receiver, and, 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 and we at the game, his dad, like, bro, he say, man, you see my son in the future in the NFL, what you think, bro? I say, bro, the only thing I can predict that was going to happen to your son in the future, that he going to die. I, I know that's going to happen. I said, other shit, I can't, I, I, I can't say because I see so many kids as parents, man, we, we assume and hope, but then things happen within those years. A little chick can get pregnant. He can go to just, you know, just things happen, you know? And so, but he has to want it, man, because you got a kid somewhere else that's like me. Man, you know, I had to, what really motivated me, because I just watched TV and see my guys who I played and lived on my street in Compton at UCLA and, and USC. And all the, and I, man, so I knew, yeah, man, I, I can do that, you know? Because <laughs> you got a kid somewhere else that's home. And I tell my daughters right now, when they was in sports, and they went to a private school, all white private school, academic. And, and one day I told them, they, they, uh, they was at practice. So I said, look, we're going to run summer track. So all right, daddy. So I took a man slumming the walls. Man, the first day of practice, getting the car. Oh, daddy, we don't like it. The girls curse and the, the language and all that. I said, no, 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 no. I said, but check this out. I said, you see Tamika and Shanika? See, that's who's going to motivate. That, that's who you're going to deal with in college and high school because, see, they way out of poverty is through sports. Right. See, y'all go, to school to, y'all go to school to Mercedes Benz every morning, eat. I said, enjoy a nice 10,000 square foot house. I say, so I expect y'all to beat Heather and Megan. Mm-hmm. When you can beat Tamika and Shanika, 
Now you got a problem. That's going to determine how bad you want it. Because that's who you're going to see at the, at the finish line. You know, I said, because they don't have a father that can send them to these high price private schools. So they have to go through sports. And that's just the way it is. I said, so y'all got to understand that. You know, y'all blessed. But if you really want to work hard, you got to go through them. And when y'all beat them, then y'all doing something. But until then, I expect y'all to beat Megan in heaven. Right. Come on. I mean, I expect that. Right. Damn. One of the fastest men in the NFL. We think what the cup. You know? What I'm saying? You know? <laughs> what the hell? You know? That's that's in the genes at least. Yeah, genetic man. So so they they understood the, the, the thing. So if you want to do it, man, you you got some kid in Chicago, L.A., New York, West Wisconsin. Some some kids so else want the same thing that you want. They, they, they grinding too. So you may be good in your town, in your school, but man, you got another kid, man, they hungry. They mom don't have a Mercedes Benz. They mom don't put them in a, in a, in a parochial school. They mother and father might not be together. They may not, they may be on wick, eating wick. Y'all eating steaks, man. Come on, y'all got a maid to clean up your room. Come on, man. Yeah. I say, and I, every morning I just drive my kids to school going to New Orleans, we go down, downtown in the slum. And I tell my kids, I tell them, I said, that can be us underneath that bridge. So be thankful and grateful for what you have. Don't get complacent. I'm gonna give you what you need, not what you want. My daughter's getting daddy, we're in high school, and all the kids laugh at us because you know you play pro football, you gotta drop it up at school. I'm gonna give you what you need, not what you want. Right. Right. You get your own shit, then you you it's yours. Because if I buy it, I can take it away from you. Amen. I can take it away from you anytime. So that's our model, man. And I, my daughter, she bought her first mistake. She's like, Dad, I understand what you're saying. I said, see, see, because if I own it. I can take the keys from you. If you own, you're gonna appreciate it more because it's right. yours. So my mind, I'm gonna give y'all what y'all need, not what you want. And that just I right, my mind, mine right now. They pay for my they pay for my life insurance, bro. About four years ago, I told him, I said, let's hold up. I said, this is how we're gonna play this role. I say, if I die today tomorrow, your mama may get remarried, y'all may go to Africa like y'all want, y'all gonna enjoy, y'all gonna have a hell of a lifestyle. I'm gonna be gone. I say, so who is going to benefit me or y'all? It's going to benefit y'all. So if y'all going to be the beneficiary of my policy, y'all going to have to pay it because it don't matter to me. I'm right. out of here. Right. So how, how well y'all want to live? Y'all want to live good? You pay the policy. Look, I, I, I shouldn't have to take care of you when I'm dead, when I'm in took care of you when I was alive. Right. So life is an investment. So every year, the last year, I say, y'all paid it? Oh, Daddy, we should have it. Well, hey. I, my mom and dad, they, they, they died. My mom died. She never came back and talked to me about no heaven or no hell. I said, I'm a, real, I'm a reality person. I said, you want, I, I said, if y'all don't do nothing with me, I'll be somebody's skeleton. I said, my daughter, y'all in the medical field, that skeleton y'all be experiencing, that's somebody's body. I said, somebody, that was somebody. You know what I'm saying? I said, no. so they, they look at me and be like, man, you always come. I said, yes, sir. I said, so they ain't gonna just throw my ass away. I'm gonna be somewhere. I said, so if y'all want, y'all want to live good, and y'all pay the goddamn policy. Hey, it's a little price to pay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I said, I'm going yeah. to yeah. go, go on, man. I'll probably be talking all day. <laughs> no, man, I was going yeah. to, I appreciate it, man. And, and yeah. honestly, yeah. Um, I was going to say, I didn't I didn't even know they employed dead people, man. I, I never hit me that the, the bony guy at the, at the office is, is, is working. Yeah, man. that's somebody, that's <laughs> somebody's body, man. Oh, the man. experiments y'all did in medical school, that's somebody's body. They don't just throw that body away. You may not have insurance. You think they're gonna just throw the body in the trash can? No, it's going to some laboratory. I said it's gonna be used. So how you wanna do it? If y'all won't get paid off me, man, because it ain't gonna matter to me. I say I done been to a lot of funerals. They don't talk about your bank account, your 401k, your stock market, none of that's mentioned. Cause it don't matter no more. You're out of here. You out of here. Then y'all may take my picture down about a year later. My picture may be in the damn trash can. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I say, so I'm a realist. I'm keeping it real with y'all. So if y'all want to benefit and live a good life on y'all behalf, not mine, because I took care of you while I was living, y'all pay the policy. That's simply that. So they can. <laughs> we definitely appreciate your, your mark that you left on the, on, on football. You're not just gonna be a picture off the wall, my man. They, the way the way that you've done it, you're gonna be a picture on the wall for a long time. Yeah. Give me a right. little bitty picture. You know, uh, my dad. I mean, see, I done been there, dog. <laughs> look. So no, those that cry, they'll cry, they'll cry for about a day or two. See, about a month or two, you're gonna start seeing your stuff just easily going in the box, bro. They go in the box, dog. You know what I'm saying? And they'll keep one. They'll keep one. You know, 
I say, no, nah. I say, brother, I say, but I understand. I know how time it goes because dead man can't talk. He can't right. do nothing. I said, he can't come back and fight you, nothing like that. I said, I've been waiting on my mother to pick pop up and I ain't never seen her since, bro. And I knew she loved me, you know? So I, I'm just a realist, but I keep it real. And I tell them, so, you know, hey, I know one thing I know that I told that dude, son, he looked at me like I was crazy, like, man, don't be saying that about my son. Well, you ask me the future of your son. That's right. the only thing I can predict about your son. He gonna die one day. That's it, I know that's gonna happen. When, I don't know, and I hope it's a long time, but you ask me a question, man, you always got something to think. You always say shit crazy, bro. Dude, oh, I can't crazy. tell your son going in that field. I can't tell you that. You know, I can't tell. I, I remember a little dude, Chad Jones, who played LSU. He's my he's my wife's first cousin. But day after the draft, going 100 miles an hour on Canal Street, hit a pole, like it decapitated his whole body. You know, just one careless mistake, man. And I talked to him today, man, and it haunts me like, dude, where your head was, bro? But you get so caught up in the moment, no, oh, you ain't made it. You got your signing bonus one day, and you you in the hospital the next day. I said, there's no way you had to be running lights to be going that fast. You know, Canal Street, every ten, every block is a light. Mm -hmm. For you to hit a pole doing that, that means you you pass some lights up, bro. You don't do hundred miles within a block, bro. It don't work yeah. like that, bro. That was a bill up. And he's like, man, you right, Mr. Clarence, bad. He said, now, nah, what if, you know, we talked about it. And I said, but life goes on, bro. You know, life goes on, man. You know, you still here. The most best thing, you're still here. Mm -hmm. You know, but you can talk and mentor to other kids. Man, a stupid mistake can haunt you, bro. You know, and I tell that to my kids, man. Some things you do in life can haunt you the rest of your life, man. You know, that's repercussion on everything. You know, so, you know, I guess I'm the talk when they, they see me coming, man. They be like, oh, he, he coming all these damn. Oh, listen, I was always taught that if you can learn knowledge from any anybody who takes the time to impart knowledge, then you matter somebody to tell. Oh, yeah. So, oh, and everybody they deliver different, you know. And and that's you know that's what I, you know that's, that's what I do, bro. You know, I, I I was on this world as a testament. Even when I see guys, you know, and I tell a man about the game that hey, can you handle it mentally, because you're gonna get some scrutiny, you know. And they're gonna make you, you know, don't 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 believe when guys tell me I don't read the newspaper. Bullshit. You read it. See and when people it. start talking negative about you, man, it it it, it, it. then your family, my mom, my you know, they, everybody feel that, bro. You know, you try to, oh I'm good, man. I, I, I'm good, dog. I don't worry about it. I mean, I don't read that shit. Yeah, right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's a if you can't deal with it mentally, bro, man, it, it'll crush. Then the things that come at you, you know, females, this. Everybody hug you, don't love you, man. Everybody, you know, just, I kept my circle small. I kept my circle, man. And my best friend, my cousin, man, got, you know, I, I just never let nobody else come in. I wasn't that type. Of, I just tell Andre Rodden, I don't need 20 people around me, man. You know, I don't need that, bro. That don't believe. And you see that all the time, you know, 20 people around me. Man, everybody hug you, don't love you, cuz. You know, and that just, life. When you, when you, when you, when you cut them off, that's when your problems gonna come. You know, it's crazy because I actually just saw uh, a meme earlier about that. And that that right there says as soon as they can't get money from you or use you, uh, or you tell them no, that's when all the that's when all the oh, you know what I'm saying they, they know about you, they know you're bad, they know you're good, so they're gonna expose you. You know, and Bobby Womack, I don't know if you remember him, you know, mm -hmm. he had a song, you know, once I live a millionaire spending my money like I just didn't care, taking all my friends out for a mighty good time, drinking that gin, smoking weed, champagne, and wine. But as soon as my money got low, I didn't have a friend. I had no place to go. That's real, man. That's real, bro. You know, so keep yourself from there. You know, not saying you can't, I'm a very, I never, I never met a stranger, you know, but then I know, I know my perimeter, what I let in, you know, and what I let people know about me, you know, because my best friend is the man in the mirror, you know, I mean, even though my wife, I've been with her since 1980, you know, do I trust 100%? Nah, it'll turn on you too. I mean, I'm just keeping it real. I, I go to a, divorce, I go to a divorce, you'll see. You know, what I'm you know? So, so, but, but Michael Jackson said, the man in the mirror, that's my best friend. When I cry, he cry. When I turn around, he turn around. If I turn around, he don't turn around, and I got a problem. You know what I'm right. saying? If I cry and my, and, my, and my shadow don't cry, something's wrong. But. You know, that, 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 that's it, but I gotta love me first, man. If I don't love me, I can't love you. I, I can't say I'm your friend when I don't, and I hate myself, you know? I hate, you know, and I tell that to my daughters, you know? They, 
My daughter wanted to go to Dominican and get a, a tummy tuck, some shit. I'm like, man, you evidently you don't like what God made, created. Huh, dad? Went, no, no, evidently you don't. He don't make no mistakes at all. He 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 make who you are, and you accept that. I say I'm five, I'm five, six, five, seven. You know, man, one little chick. Oh, you were six foot five. Yeah, all right, well, cool. I'm gonna see her at the class reunion. You, know? <laughs> you 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 messed up your meal ticket. Right. You messed up your meal ticket. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know? You messed up your meal ticket, you know what I'm saying? I say so, but you know, except and I never had a complex over my, my size. Or, or man, man, God made me because I got some strength, and I use my strength to my ability to win. So hey, what is what it is in life, man? You know, I'm not the smartest one, you know, and, and but I always tell them I know everything. I know what I know, and I know what I don't know. So I tell my kid, "Well, Dad, you know everything." I say, "Right, I know everything. I know what I know, and I know what I don't know." You know? So I know everything. <laughs> Man, I, Mr. Mr. Vernon, this has been a uh, this has been an amazing opportunity. I, if oh, possible, man. I would definitely like to speak to you again in the future. Oh, anytime, man, anytime. It's your wisdom, man. I really feel like um, as part as part of you know people from my generation, I would I I feel like you can go a long way, man. And 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 the stories that you have for us, the knowledge that you have for us, uh, if people will take the time to listen, then I definitely think that oh, yeah. takes some from the conversation. So I, I appreciate you, man. I hope you good good luck in your endeavors, man. You know, yes, like sir. I, said, bro, I mean, you know, I may see you on CNN one day, you know what I'm saying? Just claim it, bro. You know, have your own pod. Like I said, we live in a technology world, so now people have their own podcast. And we just, you know, everything is, is, is evolution. Just, it's, it's, it's so broad now, man. You know, and so, you know, just, man, keep doing what you're doing. You know, like you say, especially in this field. I mean, you don't see too many of us, you know. Yes, and, sir. But, but, you know, but that, that's like a sign that, that, right, that's a sign that it can be done. You know, and I, I, I said when I pledged, I pledged fraternity, and I used to read a lot of those poems, and somebody said it couldn't be done, you know, but it can be, you know, and I tell it to my kids, you know, and and I always say that when somebody said it couldn't be done, but he would have checked or never tried, but he wouldn't know till he tried, you know, so, so you know, and I, I, I like I say, two negative equal positive, you know, Thanks. I say I wasn't that good in math, but I know two negative equal positive you know what I'm saying? so it's crazy because i just said that to my brother-in-law yesterday i i, I just said those exact words to my brother-in-law yesterday it's like you find this, this confirmation you know what i'm saying and things that happen to let you know you're on the right um path i, I was gonna ask uh if you don't mind me asking what fraternity you did you pledge are you able to tell me oh, man? Omega, omega side five omega yeah, side five, man. yeah man man oh yeah. man my dad told me your dad a Q? No, my dad told me uh because I didn't go to college, unfortunately. He said if I did, I had to come back either Mason or a Q dog. So oh yeah, see, see, I'm I'm working on the Mason, Mason thing now. All my brothers, my mom, my sister Easter Star, I'm the only one in my son-in-law, he's a Mason. So they've been trying to get me. And uh I, I'm I'm trying to debate me if I'm gonna do it at home in my hometown or I'm gonna do it here in New Orleans, man. So by the end of the year, I, I'm gonna make a decision. But but uh my my dad, yeah, he was a uh, he was 33rd, man. My brothers, man. My mom, my sister, all them Eastern stars. So it ran, it ran deep in my family. And my brother, like, see, frat, all my daughters are Delta. My wife is Delta. But uh, could have, you know, the best thing I ever did. But it's it just being part of an organization, man. You yes, know, sir. and that's a good thing, man. You know, good guys. And, and uh, you know, and, and, and I'm going to give you a story because that, that kind of helped me get in the NFL. My position coach, we had one black coach called Coach. Uh, See, Charlie, jo Charlie Joyner and Emmett Thomas. Emmett Hall of Famer played in Kansas City. But anyway, man, I'm reading stuff in the paper that, you know, man, I get hurt too much, blah, blah, blah. So I get up by 3 o'clock in the morning and go to Coach Emmett's room. I'm, I'm, I just want to know, man, what, what's, what's being said? Because if they print this in the paper, somebody telling these people suck. They just ain't just printing this. And uh, I go in his room. He's like, man, why you not sleep? I say, man, I just can't sleep. I got stuff on my mind. Coach, I say, you know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if y'all going to release me. I, I'm just confused. He said, he say, well, why would he give you that reason? He said, and I looked over his head while he was talking to me, and I seen a Q sign. So I'm like, man, what well, you know about that? He said, yeah, what you know? Because I never got branded. Mm -hmm. said, yeah, what you know about that? And so we went and chopped Chop it up. Yeah, I know that. But from that day, I knew I had an ear at the table. And he's always come, hey, man, frat, look, blah, blah, blah. You know, get yourself together. You need to da, 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 da. So now I feel more comfortable and more at ease. Cause I had my frat brother telling me, I knew if I had one vote, I had his vote. Right. He was my savior vote. And, you know, so sometimes being a fraternity or any organization, Mason, 
and that person was sitting across that table could be that one to be that one to change your life, man. You know, and I tell it to my daughter, man, just get it, get involved in things, you know, Masons, Asian store, anything, you know, because you know, you never know who's sitting across that table. Even like in high school, you go and you hire somebody, they come from your high school, you're gonna probably look at them like, all right, I'm gonna give you a little love. Right. You, you went to you went to blah blah blah. And it, and it, it is no different, man. You know, that's how the world works. You know, network. Well, network. I just I definitely I definitely respect the uh the fact that you were in the practice. Like I said, I, I I know what you guys as far as stand for. Um, as far oh, yeah, as yeah, 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 code yeah, of conduct, the people to be uh, even oh, able to, uh, to to, to, it, to join it, the As you get older, uh, as you get uh, older, it changes on on the outlook. Because I'm in the grad chapter. Yes, undergrad. Oh, it's just wild now. <laughs> damn time, you know what I'm saying? You know, but now I'm more involved in the community. You know, I'm just saying I'm older now. You know. And yes, uh, it is a whole different, they, they hold your foot to the fire and hold you a bigger standard once you grab chapter because you got lawyers, doctors, and you know, so you know, but, it, but you're always getting it back, man. You know, I'm always, I'm not speaking at schools or just doing something, man, you know, just part of something. We just created a little, a little, uh, a little extended group off our fraternity called Wall Street Cues. So we getting involved in the stock market, man, buying a lot of these stocks up. You know, it's like 15 numbers. So we call ourselves, we just we just initiated that last week, Wall Street Q LLC. So, you know, we we we, we you know us coming together, man. man, and doing network, you know, we all put up equal in case of a tragedy come, we got this money, you know, in there, you know. And uh so yeah, so we we so far so good, man. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. a beautiful thing, man, to see the positive. What it's it's each one reach one, teach one. You teach, you know, yeah. You, oh yeah, you pass that oh, knowledge yeah. along, and, and oh, and you always, man, bro. always, bro. You always, and I tell it to my kids, my son in laws, man. You know, just my grandsons, man. You know, dog. You know, I mean, just, just, uh, man, just you, 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 you just, you just got to be mindful, man. And I'm gonna let you go with this, man. And you probably want to check this out. When I was get, when 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 I wanted to get paid, I went to Ursay. And we was talking in the conversation. I said, man, look, man, I got to get paid. The first time, first time, you know. And uh, he went to the board and he put K-A-S-H equal C-A-S-H with the dollar sign. So I'm like, man, what this dude doing? He said, K-A-S-H, what does is, what is it say? I said, cash. He said, cash equal cash. I'm like, cool. He said, well, this cash is an acronym to this cash. He said, now this cash, the K-A-S-H, it stands for knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits. He said, now, if you lack in one of them, it's like a car that runs on four cylinders. If you lack one cylinder, the car not going to reach its full capacity. He said, so you got to be honest with yourself. He said, now, until you get all these K's on the KSH right, you'll never get the CASH. He said, but you got to be. He said, but your problem, Clarence, do what he told you. He said, your problem? He said, you got knowledge of the game. Very smart. He said, your attitude is great. You're a people person, man. Everybody in the community in the Napa love you. He said, your skills are off the chain, you know. He said, but your habits are bad. So I'm like, what? He said, no. He said, my office, look over that field. He said, you're the last one to walk on practice. You're the first one to leave practice. He said, you don't put no overtime into your, in your job, man. I'm like, huh? He said, yeah. He said, this office, this office is right here for a reason. I look at all y'all, pra all the practices. He said, I can tell when you when you start walking towards the locker room, practice about to end. He said, you don't stand on the field to put no overtime in like them other guys, man. He said, but your talent takes you to the Pro Bowl every year, so you think you don't need to do no extra work. He said, but in life, he said, if you don't have all that, he said, now when you get all that right, he said, come talk to me. But he said, you got to be honest with yourself. You, you, got, you have to know if these things are right, these acronyms are right. And then next year I went to him. That's how I got paid. I said, man, I got the KSH, bro. I said, I go to practice. I said, I stay after practice. I always have to practice. I go watch film. That's why you always hear Peyton Manning. He study film. When everybody gone, he study, he putting that work in. You know, you talk about Michael Jordan, all the great ones. Man, when everybody gone, he putting He wasn't lying. Soon before practice, it's like a school teacher. I taught in the school system. Before the, before the bell rings, some of the teachers come to you, hey, man, can you watch my class? They in their car. They going to the nightclub. Happy hour. Get a seat, you know, or you can tell in the office, Joe will be walking, he's bull crap and walking toward the elevator, you know, probably at the copy machine. He done left his desk now 30 minutes ago. But he, mm. he know, you know, he just don't want to leave out the building. But as soon as that mother hit three o'clock, oh the elevator press. He out of here, you know. But I had to I had to really I tell it to my 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 workers, and they I always use the cash theory. And that's in anything, man. 
I even told my nephew in the drug game. I said, bro, you know what I'm saying? I said, you gotta, you gotta have the cash theory, dog. You know, you gotta have analysis of what you're doing. I said, but see, your problem is, I said, you don't have the knowledge because you always get caught. I said, <laughs> your attitude is good. I said, you're skilled. I said, you got bad habits, bro. Everybody know what the hell you're doing, dog. You know, right. and I said, that's why you never get to see it. You, you never get that money that you see on, on TV that, that falsified the dope, the dope game. And he said, oh, man, you know what, oh, you right, oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, my barbers, I tell to my barbers, man. You know, hey, bro, you know, I said, y'all problem is the H, the habits too, because when somebody have a three o'clock appointment, you can't be coming in no five o'clock talking about your girlfriend or the tour for clothes. You got to bring the child to school. You got to pick one. That's excuses, man. I said, you never see the, the doctor who's doing surgery coming in, you on them gurney with your heart open, and he out there playing golf. It don't work. He there before you get there. Right. You know, I said, that's, and I tell it to my kids, I'd rather be, I'd rather be 15 minutes early than be one minute late. Be there, be ready. You know, and I always stress that to them, even for school. If I got to wake you up, you don't want to do this. And I tell any kid that want to play sport, if I want you call, no, if I got to call you, you don't want to do it. I shouldn't have to call. You should be waiting on me. Right. If you really want this, in anything in life, anything, man, you know, I mean, so, so again, you know, I'll be all day, dog. <laughs> oh, Mr. Brett, listen, Mr. Brett, I'm serious. Yeah. I really want I to talk about with you. Man. Hey, but but I, I love you. Like, you like, damn, I thought I had to do crazy. You know, yeah, bro, this is my damn mother. <laughs> no, 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 no. The funny part is, I, I actually, man, I love these kind of conversations. This is the kind of conversations I have with my dad, man, and I, and I soak the knowledge up. I feel like, oh, yeah. um, I feel like anything that you could impart to me to help me along my way, brother, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm willing to listen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, yeah, man. Oh, um, that's, 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 I always do that, man. See, brother, anybody, man, you know, man, just in life, bro, like you say, I always tell my kids, how can trying to get there tell Ben there how to get there? How can trying to get there tell Ben there how to get there? Now, sit there and listen. You know, you, know, so you ain't never been 50, you ain't never been 60. You know what I'm saying? The things that you're going through life, no, dad, you old school guy. No, I said the game, I said the players change, but the game still the same. Right. One gonna be one, two gonna be two. You know, that's just that Monday gonna be Monday. You know, you may call it something else. I said, but the, I said, it, it's still the same. The world gonna still be the same, but the players change. I said, so, you know, you know, I mean, like they say football, the game, the game ain't changed, the players change, still, it's still four downs, still seven points, you know, still you gotta kick a field goal. Hey, they ain't changed. It's still the same. Still, still throw the same. ball. You still run the ball. You still tackle. So what changed about the game? The players didn't change, but the game's still the same. And that's how life is. Sir, man, Mr. Bro if we can, uh, I definitely want to do a part two sometime. Oh, yeah, uh, bro. Just, just chop it up. Or even just yeah. to chop it up on, you know, if you have the time. Uh, for yeah. this, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this one, though, because, yeah. man, I can't give me everything in one shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I appreciate uh, you, man. Like I said, I'll be down there. Hopefully homecoming, you know. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'll be in Lafayette, man. Like I said, my we got our 50 year anniversary fraternity. Then you know, you know, a lot of us come down there for uh, just you know just see because we ain't seen each other in so long, you know. Especially we getting older now, you know. Guys just chop it up, man. Just have a good time, see my old friends, and you know, tell little stories, and you know, and just enjoy life, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, hopefully, I'll be in the area, man. Because I, I would, love, I would love, man, the work that. Uh, oh, yeah. And Jonathan, shout out to my man, Jonathan Brown. The work that he's done really allowed us to be able to sit down and talk with you, man. This is the yeah. opportunities that he's presented. Uh, it's been a blessing to yourself. So I, cool. I definitely thank, thank you uh, for allowing me this time today, Mr. Vernet. Cool. And we'll definitely do it soon. And I'll get back right. to you with the article when it's, when it's all written, too. You'll see it before it actually goes in. Cool. All right, Bill. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Take, take care, brother. All right. Cool, cool. All right.